Hey everybody, it's Debbie Happy Cohen here with Joy Base Living and we're going to do another talk about healing from narcissistic abuse because the topic seems to be on the table and people are really responding to those videos and blog posts. So there was something that I learned last week that was really life altering for me in terms of um, an understanding of healing from narcissistic abuse and it actually came after I had received a message from my long lost relative and um, I told you about that on one of the previous videos and after posting my video response to my relative and posting it publicly I had about a three day vulnerability hangover and that's why I haven't spoken here for about a week and then I had other things coming up I had to take care of so um that was amazing it a vulnerability hangover happens when you expose too much of what you're normally comfortable with exposing about yourself and you're like I just did what what was I thinking and all this like it's like an internal combustion goes on of like it or somebody's described it as like tidal waves of um of of WTF, <laughs> what did I just do? Um, and it can come with shame, it can come with grief, it can come with exhaustion, it, it's, it, but it's just, you're kind of like, you know, but it's, it's healthy because you did it. You're the one who instigated it. You're the one who, who moved that wind and, and moved those waves and made that experience uh, rocky because it changed your level of comfort. Um, and, and your feeling of security or safety. So you, that's your breakthrough. That was my breakthrough. And um, in the midst of that, I ended up coming across a woman who has done some amazing research. She, she studied theology, psychology, and criminology because she had had a psychopathic older brother when she was uh, growing up who was four years older than her and she adored him. And, um, so one of the terms that she brings up that I want to create a distinction for you about that was so powerful to me is the distinction between codependency and co-narcissism. Codependency happens when somebody's people pleasing and but what's underlying it is a fear of being alone. A lot of times codependents will look for somebody who's stronger than them to take care of them and that kind of thing but then that person has a problem they have an addiction they have something else that's getting their attention a co-narcissist is somebody who is targeted by a narcissist for uh, what they call narcissistic supply I'm gonna and it, the, the, the voice in them is I, I need your energy I need your attention I need your power and you know I, you can't have the power I need to have the power um, so if you're surviving that you become a people pleaser, not because you're afraid of being alone, but because you're afraid for your survival. So if you imagine somebody in a hostage situation being a pleaser to their hostage, or the person who's taken them hostage, it's, it's like that. You're not pleasing them because you're afraid of being alone. You're pleasing them because you want to survive and they might have given you, you know, a crumb of something. And, um, could be a crumb of hope or a, a literally food or you know and so then you end up creating like what's called a trauma bond and that trauma bond if if you grew up with that kind of trauma bond it's like software that the only way I know to get rid of it is through really um, hyper vigilantly stalking your thoughts and noticing what's running the software. Some of those thoughts might not even be verbal. They might have been trained into you when you were an infant and you were just a toddler and you were learning that no, 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 energy's not on you. Energy's on the narcissist. And that distinction to me was really important because I've always been a very dynamic, empowered, strong kind of person, which I learned that narcissists love that. They, they want that because they want somebody to take care of them. They want like a two-year-old wants a mommy. That's how narcissists are. They want somebody who's strong that 
is not going to rely on them that they can rely on. They want somebody who is like pathologically resilient because that person is going to stay in the relationship. They want somebody who's going to project their goodness and empathy and kindness onto the narcissist. And, oh no, you know, they're really, they're, they're, there's some kindness in there. There's love in there. Just keep sticking it out. You'll help them. You'll help them make it through. And, uh, I wish I could turn this into a comedy series. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. It's just kind of so sad. It's I haven't like managed that yet, but that would be really cool. Um, anyway, if you learn, if you look it up, learn the difference between codependency and co-narcissism. Um, it, it was healing for me because on one hand I could be like all that and a bucket of chicken. And especially if I'm focused on somebody else's um, dreams, goals, trajectory, you know, I could see so clearly HD full definition, high definition about next steps. But when it came to my own experiences, I would find myself like in the Wizard of Oz, like in a field of poppy flowers and like waking up out of a stupor all of a sudden go, what am I doing? What, you know, like I would get on the, the tr that's why I've had coaches and coaches have really, really helped me stay on path. Um, but the, coming in and out of it, in and out of it is something I, I didn't understand because that poppy field experience is, it, it's kind of like learned helplessness. Like if you focus on the other, you're going to be fine. You're going to be energized. You're going to be strong. But if you focus on you with energy and deliberate intent and power, just on you and your joy, you're going to black out. You're going to go unconscious. You're going to forget. You're going to get, you know, the, 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 wishy-washies and um when I learned about this it took a huge load off of me because um I stopped blaming myself for that and I also felt extremely seen validated for my experience and I don't see myself as a victim I do see myself as somebody who was attacked by somebody else who has a lot of shame inside of inside of him just a lot of shame so this isn't about blaming anybody i'm not interested in that it's about continually repeatedly recognizing where and how i might be giving my power away and taking it back taking it back taking it back internally and externally and part of that also is you know not attracting more people who are who are like that so if you recognize that the dance is like a tango and it takes two and you keep magnetizing yourself to people who are narcissistic and you don't want to do that anymore, just realize you probably have that trauma bond still activated. So I hope this is helpful to you. Um, I know we're going on eight minutes here, so I'm going to, I'm going to end it now, but thank you for, for being there and let me know your thoughts or comments or your experiences. Uh, let me know what's helpful to you that it's it's guiding you know my direction with you and um if you can make me laugh you get extra points okay talk to you later bye